Today's video is just a quick video I wanted to do on something that I just picked up or learnt how to do. And it was something I wanted to try and solve and it is for Linux users and especially also those that watched my previous video about how to work around some of the DaVinci Resolve problems on Linux where the Linux version would not support AAC audio specifically, whether it's the paid or the free version, as well as, well, on the free version, it wouldn't support the H.264 or 265. I'm just going to show it with the audio here, but it doesn't really matter. What I'm trying to demonstrate really is it'll work for any script file that you need to run on a or more than one file in a directory. And how I showed in the DaVinci mail is I can just show the older way or the traditional way of doing it from the command line and then the new sort of quicker way that'll be easier to do. And then we can have a look at how that can work in both Nautilus as well as Dolphin File Managers. And I think the Dolphin File Manager method that I'm going to show will work with any of the others. It's just generic method. Actually, it'll work anywhere in Linux, really. So traditionally, if I've got these two files here that you see, uh, so the challenge here obviously is for me to use these now in DaVinci Resolve on Linux. I need to convert just the audio tracks that are in AAC codec. I need to convert them into PCM codec and then they'll work 100% right inside DaVinci Resolve. I want to do it as quickly as possible really. That's the whole point. I don't want to do it sort of slowly. So how I was doing it in the meantime was I would have said right click and I would have gone to actions here and I would have said open the terminal here. Let's just make this a little bit darker. I'll just increase that font size a little bit. But typically what I would have then done was I would have got gone and said, okay, I've opened it into that current directory you're seeing on the right. And I'm just going to keep both of these open, actually. I would start off just doing a listing of the directory to see which of the files I need to do. Okay, it's going to be that file I need to convert. And then I would type in, first of all, my script file name and then I would paste in the actual file name over there and typically I'd hit enter it'll do the conversion and if you look on the right here it has created a dot move container and this is the one and I put a little sort of an underscore PCM just to indicate that it's the one that's been converted now into the PCM format and I mean if we do look at the original if I just start up the original and bring it in there You know, that's the MP4 playing now with AAC sound. And I think if you go and look over here under codec information, we'll see there it is, AAC audio format. So let's just close that. And I can show you now with this one that's just been converted. There's the dot move that it's running at the moment. If we go look under tools codec, you'll see it's converted. Okay, it shows SOWT, but that's the PCM uh, format. So you need to do this obviously now for each and every video. I'm just going to delete that. That isn't compliant for DaVinci Resolve. But again, as I said, this could be anything you having to apply. It could be, you know, con it doesn't have to be FFmpeg. It could be whatever batch file you need to run for anything. The point is you'd have to open your command line and run it. So the quicker way, and I've also sort of changed the batch file a little bit so that I can do multiple files at once now, because that one I showed you the single one. I'd have to run that now sort of for each, or I'd have to put each of their names in after it and let it run sort of in, you know, successively in that batch file. But it'll now be as easy as this. You just got to highlight the file or highlight which, however many files you've got. You right click and on Dolphin and most of the generics, you can, it's just going to go down to open with, and I've, I'll show you this just now how to get this into this little pop-up over here. But under the open with, I've given this one the description convert AAC to PCM audio. If I click on that, it literally runs them one after the other and it's done. So it, it takes something like, you know, one or two or three seconds and it's as quick as that. Finished. I can delete the originals if I want to or whatever I want to do now. So let's just delete this. I'll just show you then quickly how to do this. There are sort of two ways of doing this. The one is the generic way, which I will show first, and then I will just show the additional step that's required for the Nautilus one. So for the generic way and for the one that works for Dolphin, you're obviously, first of all, just going to have to create your script file. Whatever your script file is going to be, in this case, 
I've got one that I just called Convert AAC. If you're wondering why it hasn't got a, well, none of the others have, but some of them have got a .sh. You don't need an extension in Linux for anything because you'll see at the top of the file, it does define itself as a bash script file. So it, the OS knows what to run. But the golden rule really is put the script file in your path so that you can run it from anywhere in Linux. You don't have to specify the sort of full path name. And typically what the path is going to be is going to be your home directory dot local spin. If you put your script files in there, it'll execute from anywhere. You just need the, you know, the script file name. So let's just have a quick look at the script file. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. So as I said there, I have defined it first of all with the bin bash, you know, the file type that is executable. It just checks to see if ffmpeg is installed. And by the way, don't get very impressed with this coding. This coding was actually just generated in Google Gemini. So I just gave it the correct prompt and tweaked it a bit until it did what I needed it to do. But I didn't write this from scratch. So it's just checking to see if ffpeg is installed. Otherwise, obviously, it can't run. So it'll exit with a message. It checks if any arguments are provided. It does need an argument. It needs at least one file name to work. So if, if there isn't a file name given, it's going to stop as well. Obviously, this is important if you're running it from the command line. Then what it is really doing here is just running a loop. And this is a change, by the way, to the script file that I showed in the DaVinci Resolve video. I'm now allowing it to accept the input of one or multiple input files. So it's going to loop through for each input file. So if you've selected five files and then right clicked and said run, it's going to do it one after the other for each of the files until there's no more files left, uh, you know, in the input parameters there. So it checks that the file exists. That's a bit superfluous because it is going to be there. And essentially all it's really doing is it's just going to make sure that it looks at what the input file name is. And then over here, it is going to name it with the same name, but underscore PCM dot move. I'm just converting everything to the move container so that it doesn't overwrite the MP4 one. That's the only reason really. And then that's the actual line that's being executed. That's really what runs for each file then. It's really just copying the video format. It is converting the audio format though to PCM and using that output file name it was defined over there. And of course, when it's finished, it'll just say it's successfully finished. So that's the script file. But like I said, any script file, you could, you know, whatever file operation you want to do, this is really obviously helpful for file operations. Put it in a script file. And then this is what you do. So you keep that there. Just remember the name of the script file. The next important step then really is to get it into the menu for Dolphin, which is this open file width. And the other thing is you also want to have this running just for video files. There's no point in running this script if it's an audio file or, you know, something. Well, actually, it will work for audio file as well now to think about it, but it doesn't help running anything else. So just bear that in mind here. If you right click and set open with, you'll see there there's, there's the description. But if I was to, for example, right click on the batch file and say open with, you're not going to see it sort of context away, you know. So let's go see how we do that. That's the next step. So for Dolphin, you just need to go to, and it should be in this sort of direction, or this is the directory that works anyway, if you put it into this directory. You just need to go to this directory, your home directory dot local share applications, and you're going to create a desktop entry. We'll see there's numerous desktop entries already here, dot desktop, whatever you've got things that are on your menu or on your desktop as icons. Now I've just got to find the one that I actually created. Because if I don't find it, it's going to be embarrassing. Okay, there it is. So I call the desktop file convert AAC dot desktop, and you'll see it's got an icon that looks sort of like a video over there. So if I right click on it and we go and have a look at that now on the editor. So this is really sort of the important bits of it. It needs to have the heading or the header there, desktop entry. The type is going to be application. This is the name is, and is that description that you saw that appears in the right click menu, convert AAC to PCM audio. Obviously, you're going to put that into whatever you want. And then I'll just put a comment in as well. 
and it's just saying there converts video from AAC audio to PCM audio for DaVinci Resolve. And then the actual line that executes is this. So it'll be an exec equals. And you'll see there is the name of that script file that we created a little bit earlier. No path needed there because it is in the executable path already. And the other important part is the percentage U. All the percentage U is saying is it is executing that script file and it's passing whatever was selected or whatever was added as input parameters it's passing through to the script file. So in this case, if you've highlighted three or four files and then you've right clicked and you've you know clicked to execute, those three or four file names will be passed through as the percentage U, which the script will then make use of in that do while loop I showed just now. There is the icon and you can find these, there are descriptions for the icons at various places, but the point is for this one, videos-mp4 will display that icon you saw now on the desktop entry. And this MIME type over here is quite important. This is the thing that defines when you right click on a file, what context will it show this menu? And you'll see I've described here video slash X Matruska, which is the MKV container, video slash MP4 and various of the other types here. I think you could also put in a video slash asterisk, I'm not sure, for all video types. But if you just wanted this to be for MKV, then you would have just put the first one there and taken the rest off over, whoops, the rest off over there. Uh, it doesn't really matter. The point is, all I'm saying is that is where you define the context for the right click. And then startup, notify, and terminal false. You don't want a false to run. Um, I can't actually remember what the startup notify true is, to be honest. But that is the desktop entry file that you really need. And obviously, you just modify this as required for descriptions and so on. If you've got a different script file or name, you're going to change that over there. And as I said, the context over here. So that, that really is the script file. If you have actually run that, the one important thing possibly to do is you may just want to, well, you've either got to log out or log in to make it have effect in your menu, or you just need to run something like this over here, update-desktop-database. And if You'll see nothing really happens, but if you run that, that effectively will reread those files and just refresh everything and make it work for you on your right click menu. And then, like I said, if you click you know, on the actual file name, you will see there, there is the option. And I can also just show then briefly how to do this for Nautilus. If we take Nautilus over here, I just want to sort of try and expand this so that it doesn't. This is the same directory I've got over there at the moment. And you'll see if we take, for example, say two files like that, I've selected them, I right click. Now what's interesting is you still have the open width option here. If you just go down, you'll see there is the option convert AAC to PCM audio. So that default, as I said, is always available. But Nautilus has got this other little nifty trick. You right click and you'll see it's got an option down here that actually says scripts. And if you click over there on scripts, you'll see there is your script file that you are going to now put together. Just remember that if you don't see your script file, something you need to check is that it is actually marked as executable. Because if it's not, it won't appear here, even though it's in the correct place. The other thing you'll see here, which is quite nifty, is you see open scripts folder. There's a specific place where you need to put the script file. So if I say open, you're going to see there is that same script file that I showed you a little bit earlier on with its same name and everything. And it actually is located in this location, the home folder dot local share Nautilus and scripts. So what I would suggest is if you're going to use Nautilus specifically, Create the other one where you're going to put it, as I showed in that bin, in that path earlier on, but copy it. If you copy it across to this location over here and you put it in here as well, it'll be available for Nautilus for those scripts over there. And the important thing is just under properties, you just want to make sure also that it is marked as executable as a program, because if not, as I said, it's not going to appear in your menu. And that is actually all that you need for uh, Nautilus to work. So again, we can just show it working here. Just zoom out there a little bit. So on Nautilus, if you now select the two, you right click and you choose scripts over there. 
we click on convert AAC, which is that script, and you'll see it runs the same conversion. So those are really just the two ways of actually running it. The default one, as I said, will work under anything and it works pretty well under Dolphin as well. And then the Nautilus one is really that putting in the special directory and marking it as executable as well. Uh, it's just maybe a little bit easier for Nautilus users because you did see here if you right click on the file and you go down to open with there's often well in this case with Nautilus especially there's a lot so it, it might be easier to use the other way but I think irrespective of that it's just a nice nifty way to be able to execute any script very quickly and easily within your file browser instead of having to drop to the command line get the name of the file copy you know copy them all across there and then execute this is a way quicker way so in fact even inside DaVinci Resolve, I can just show you quickly how I would do it, which would make it at least a little bit quicker until I can find a way of doing it as an automatically executed script within DaVinci Resolve. Let me just delete those quickly. So typically, this is now DaVinci Resolve that's open at the moment. And normally, if you sort of scrub over your video, like, it, like you're seeing there at the moment, you're supposed to hear the audio. You can see there's no audio. If you have a look at the information there, you'll see it's AAC audio. So now, how would the quickest way be to do this if you are sitting in DaVinci Resolve and I quickly need to now convert these two? I was hoping, obviously, in the future that we'd be able to use the scripts over here built in, and I'm still messing around with that, trying to get it to work. I'm getting closer. But let's say now I need to convert this one or these two quickly. I can right click and I can say open file location, which will open this. I can highlight the two of them. I can just say right click, open with, convert to. Okay, it's converted. Close that again. We're back in DaVinci Resolve. There you'll see the new files have opened. And now, here's the audio. So that file is now ready to use in DaVinci Resolve. It is as quick as that. There you go, see linear PCM, audio type. And if I go to the other one. Whereas the old one, silence. So that is actually pretty quick. I've got it down to like really usable now for Linux, I think. And bearing in mind, I showed the example on the free version of DaVinci Resolve the previous time, and you needed to convert the video as well as the audio. Well, all you have to do really is just change that batch file, the one executable line there, and include in that the conversion of the video codec as well. Then it would be very similar, you know, as exactly the same step I'm showing you now with the, just with that script file being a little bit updated, it would then do the conversion of both for you. But you could see how quick this was for the audio. Really amazing. So yeah, that's really it. And I'm hoping that some of you can just find some other uses. I, I'm applying this for DaVinci Resolve, but you could apply that sort of right-click running a script file for really anything, quite honestly. So thanks for watching and keep safe out there and I'll see you in the next video.